Robert F. Kennedy Jr. sat down with Project Veritas founder James O'Keefe to explain how the CIA is controlling what you see on social media. But even journals like Smithsonian and Smithsonian and um, National Geographic, Nature, um, The Washington Post, The New York Times appear to be uh, compromised by the CIA. We know from the, from the um, Twitter files that both the FBI and CIA were operating portals within the uh, Twitter and Facebook that allowed them to manipulate information and to de to deplatform people and to you know silence certain people that they didn't like in those in the social media. Operation Mockingbird was a an operation to compromise American journalists. There were uh, some 400 uh, editors, journalists um, from the, you know all the largest publications. The New York Times had been compromised. Um, the Washington Post was basically... What do you mean by compromised for people who... Well, they were functioning, the high-level people at those at those journals were actually were working for the agency or had, you know, signed uh, secrecy agreements with the CIA and at CBS, ABC, NBC. After 75, when it all came out you know, during the church committee hearings, the CIA promised that it would no longer compromise American journalists. It continued the program to compromise journalists all over the world. And today, the CIA is the biggest funder of journalism in the world. And how about present they, day? They fund it through USAID. Now, despite Kennedy's distrust of the intelligence blob, financial records do indicate he's paid his daughter-in-law, a former CIA officer, tens of thousands of dollars in campaign cash. The Washington Examiner reports that the Kennedy 2024 campaign gave $21,000 to Amaryllis Kennedy, the wife of his son, Bobby Kennedy III. Amaryllis worked for the CIA until 2010, reportedly, quote, thwarting terror groups from obtaining weapons of mass destruction. I don't know much about this part of the Kennedy family lore. Has this uh, come across your radar before, Brianna? I mean, I, the, the, the fact of him having CIA relatives has, has come up. Look, of course it's the case that you can't control who your child falls in love with and marries. Of course, the fact of the, your, your, your child spouse having ideological commitments that are different than your own doesn't mean that you are lying. Payments going to your daughter-in-law because maybe you helped them buy a house or you gave them a job when they needed money or something like that doesn't necessarily mean that he's like in cahoots with the CIA or that he's being disingenuous right. when he talks critically about those organizations. But, you know, I do think it would be interesting if a reporter were to ask him some questions about how he deals with those ideological and substantive differences with someone as close to his family uh, as she is, especially since he is getting so many questions from liberals about what, how he feels that his family members simply disagree with it, not have actual like professional commitments that are opposed to him, but they just don't agree with his take on vaccines or Ukraine or whatever it is. Right, and that he has suggested before that he thinks the CIA or another um, law enforcement or national security intelligence uh, agency or person uh, might have been involved in uh, in the the you know deaths in his family that yeah. have been the subject of mystery. Um, so obviously, in most of that clip, he's talking about a lot of which we know to be true, the influence by intelligence officials on um, on the media, on social media in recent years. I mean, he was talking somewhat about what's happening in the past. Um, yeah, we like this. This is a fact that there were separate portals set up on Facebook for law enforcement to flag um, uh, stuff they want looked at and taken down. You know, some now some of that is actually what we want or, you know, most people want law enforcement to identify, you know, like child pornography or or non-consensual images or violent images sure. or or terrorism being organized. They actually do want law enforcement to flag those things for the platform to to take those down. So it's not like all moderation is wrong or no one is ever like actually suggesting that because that's not true. It's a lot of like gen like criminal uh, conduct on social media, conduct that is rightly criminalized that needs to be dealt with that law enforcement can lend a hand. But what's been so creepy and it generated so much objection is that it's just didn't stop there. Now it's just, um, it, it's, 
disagreements, it's speech, it's it's um, policy disagreements on COVID, on national security. You know, we've we've talked a lot about how um, uh, you know an, uh, you, narratives that Ukraine doesn't want on social media have been flagged. Um, Lee Fong has done a lot of reporting on that. Have been flagged by law enforcement for social media sites. So yes, I think it's fair to say that they're you know they're working in tandem. Now they're not always working in tandem because social media loves this arrangement, but because they faced you know so much pressure uh, from the Biden administration, and I'm I'm sure would if it, even if it was a different pol yeah. political party's administration, it's not really the partisan. I mean, to be honest, it. the the social media aspect of this is just the fig it's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, the CIA's involvement in directing the cultural trajectory of the United States of America and engaging in a deep propaganda campaign is well documented and infinitely more pernicious than just, and it's, I'm not saying it's not important, but than mm -hmm. just the influence on these new social media apps. I mean, the the in the wake of the Cold War, there was this concerted effort to infiltrate uh, media organizations, um, uh, Hollywood, um, to influence the trajectory of American art. There was this feeling that uh, Soviet art, representational art, showing workers coming together, building a society collectively, was pernicious. And so they boosted Impressionism, both to downplay the, the kind of political value of representational art coming out of the East, and also to show, well, America is vibrant and innovative, and look at this new stuff that we're coming out, coming out with here. Take some Jackson Pollock. Um, they uh, tried to influence. Uh, 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 they were they were so frustrated that communism was so popular among young people who saw it as rooted in workers' rights and the growth of the labor movement at, coming out of the 1930s and 40s in the United States of America. They didn't understand why people were so attracted to it for its. Um, equality directives, uh, so many civil rights leaders uh, and labor leaders were communists. And so they had to engage in a propaganda campaign in the wake of the Cold War to make sure that these things weren't considered to be popular anymore. And of course, we all know about the Red Scare and all of those pogroms that swept through Hollywood uh, and stigmatized people down to uh, I Love Lucy. <laughs> um, but it was also, it, it also had these effects in so, so much more subtle and pernicious ways. Um, and so everything that he's saying there, like, People who want to call him a conspiracy theorist, like, this is not the moment. Like, this is not mm -hmm. the latest. If anything, what he's describing there is understating how much of our cultural reality has been designed through state-run propaganda mechanisms. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, it's funny. So many, even liberal people, um, just kind of more normal liberal Democrats who object, you know, who know their history as well as anyone else and object to the kind of Red Scare mentality, the... Um, McCarthy hearings, all of that stuff, just totally, wholly embraced that exact same thing with respect to the 2016 election and the purported Russian involvement. Um, it went, went, you know, what, what communication did you have with Russian agent? You know, what, what, what they, accusing people who had shared content on social media that they say is Russian origin. And still we hear that like, uh, like this gets thrown, I think this, Vivek got accused of this, others get accused of that. You're, you're, that narrative, you're saying that's a Russian preferred narrative. Well, is it accurate? Is it true? Like, it doesn't matter if it, if yes. Russia prefers it, if it's, the, if it is the case. Like we see this, these fact checks that, oh, saying Ukraine is going to eventually lose the war against Russia is, is a, is a, is a Russian propaganda campaign. Well, like if it's true, yeah, you can't say that I, if it's I, true. I, and, I and the liberal media yeah. has wholly embraced that. Ridiculous. They're red scaring all over again. Yeah, I was called out during the Bernie campaign for agreeing that uh, until uh, 60 years ago, America was an explicitly legal apartheid state mm -hmm. with two, ter two tiers of citizenship, one for white Americans and one for black Americans. Uh, and I was told, well, that's a Russian propaganda line that America is bad for black people. And I said, well, the best way to fight back against that, since it's true, is to improve the status of all people living in this country and have substantive equality. But people didn't like that answer. They, you know, if Russia says that you're supposed to take a reactionary view and just take the opposite position, even if it means, I guess, uh, validating an apartheid state and my own people's oppression. So yeah, it's it's really gross. A lot, many of us just watched the Oppenheimer movie and saw the ways that his Absolutely. his labor bona fides and, and advocating for students' rights on campus was used against him or t attempted to be used against him to invalidate his anti-war um, turn uh, toward the end of his life. And that is something I think that people have to be highly vigilant of. Why is it that there is this interest in framing Russia and China, neither of whom have been meaningfully communist in a really long time as communist actors? What is it about this ideology that 
the blob in a bipartisan way seems to find to be so scary. Uh, we just had a, a discussion with um, uh, Max Blumenthal about BRICS and the rise of alternative global economic systems. And could it be the case that the reason that there has been so much red scare about the idea of communism and kind of workers' rights and a global solidaristic workers' movement across the globe, because the blob, the elites, that the people who have been driving U.S. hegemony since the Cold War know that that's the biggest threat to the system that they've designed. So I'm, I'm very glad that RFK Jr. Is, is raising these kinds of issues. Mm, I'm going to pull your mask off. It's <laughs> Vladimir Putin after all. Don't blow up my plane, please. Yes, the real, the real communist is Vladimir Putin. Mm, more rising right after this.